Really grateful for your time coming no, here today. No worries, mate. I no actually, thing. I actually heard you on um, something to talk about podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, I really enjoyed that. All oh, right, cool, good. The nice bite-sized, kind of well-produced, straight to the point. Different to this one, we're kind of a long form, more personal. We go into the sort of whys and what fors. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was really informative. Oh, good. So, um, welcome to Chew the Chat Podcast. Thank you for your time. Oh, no worries, mate. Appreciate it, especially yeah. after a shitty drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Alex Peake from <laughs> Scramble This. Yeah, so I, as I mentioned, heard you on another podcast on something to talk about and found it fascinating. I'm new to the outdoor kind of whole wild camping, walking, hiking, scrambling. Yeah. I say scrambling. I think I've done... One kind of scramble. I think it might have been. Is it? Is it? You said in the peak somewhere, boar, boar clough, wild boar clough, wild boar clough. I yep. think that's where I've done it. Okay. I think um, with a friend of mine on my second ever wild camp, I've fallen in love with just getting outside. Yeah. Again, listening to your podcast, I know that you had a history of climbing and uh, powerlifting, which I'm interested to hear about as well. Yeah, randomly. Yeah. 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 So. Take us back a little bit then with the climbing and stuff and, you know, how did that get started? Yeah, so climbing, I mean, that was years and years ago. So um, a bunch of us, so we're from North Wales, so Wrexham, Chester area. Um, we loved climbing. Um, and then, yeah, we just kind of, you know, everyone grows up, don't they? And I worked in London for quite a while and quite a lot of friends and stuff. So it kind of went by the wayside. And a big thing with especially with climbing is you know it's not a solo activity you do go out you know you're going out as a group or minimum in pairs um and then yeah unless you're in a climbing club or something like that then you know it kind of like oh you're phoning someone you can go out climbing today oh i've got the kids or you know got to do the school run and you know all the all the stuff in, in life in, in life mate that's it that gets in the way <laughs> yeah. so yeah um lockdown kind of kicked in didn't it mm. and then it's been a massive upward trend since then. It's been insane, really. Um, okay. So I kind of got dragged into the hiking. Now that I'd never done in any great, you know, in any great depth kind of thing. Um, and I, I, I really enjoyed it. I think, you know, from, especially from a mental health point of view, considering we're at the back end, well, it's the end of the, in the last week, mental health awareness. Um, you know, especially during that lock, you know, the lockdown period has been, it's been amazing for people to be able to get out and, you know, get mm. get into nature and stuff. Um, so, yeah, for me, inherently, I was going to look for something else that was a bit more adventurous than going for a walk, I suppose. Yeah. So it incorporates incorporates being outside and, and carrying that on. Hey, I think you're right. I think the for me, and I say this openly on the podcast um, because I believe it's my duty, I... I think the first time I went out camping and, and sort of really got into the idea of getting out, getting some gear, getting a good bag, learning that, oh yeah, a decent bag helps, you know, decent footwear helps, yeah. was the actually when the lockdown kicked in initially, I just went out. I just had to go out. I was walking, as you say, with family and stuff. And then a friend of mine said, look, I'm going to go and have a camp. We're going to have a camp in the middle of nowhere. We're not going to bother anybody. I said, yeah, I'm up for it. And it was amazing. And I... I just fell in love with it. Yeah. Fell in love with it the whole time. Like I said, the second time we went out, I think it was when we went to Wild Boar Clough and waking up in the morning there, the clouds coming in, it was just beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And I remember being halfway up there, sort of on our way up and we were in the point where we were scrambling a bit. I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, I had to, I had to get up rocks and it was a, an eye opener. It was an eye opener, but I've, I've, I've kept that, um, I've kept that going and it's been, yeah, for my mental health, my family, luckily my wife, I took my wife out, she loves it. Yeah. Took the kids to Wild Boar Clough actually a few months later and we only got sort of so far up in the in the clough and camped kind of at the side of the water. Okay. Which was amazing. And they were in the water, in the cold water, which oh, was nice. great. But your website, as I've been studying, is amazing by the way. Oh, thank you. Really, really, do you do that? Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's all, that's all produced. It's amazing, really informative. Can we, can we pull that up, Aidan? Scram <clears throat> scramble this .co.uk, I think it is. And 
Yeah. Really cool, really informative, really clean. And you're putting together basically packages now so you can take people out, which is what I want to get into. And you've been in the Peak District yourself. So yeah, the Scramble the Peaks um, challenge, I, I mean, I can touch on that yeah. a bit. Yeah, let's do that. So basically, Scramble the Peaks came about because a lot a lot of people have got, like you say, they've got into the outdoors and they've heard of scrambling. They might have heard of scrambling or they might have accidentally done a scramble. You know, they've gone up to... Um, you know, they might have gone to Snowdonia and done Crib Gorch or um, Stride and Edge on Hell Valley and or so many other stuff in the lakes. And the Peak District's always massively overlooked with scrambling because it's not the Lake District and it's not Snowdonia, um, right? <laughs> just, just, to, just to be clear about that. But, you know, a lot of those areas with the, the Grade 1, I'll go on to the grades in a bit, but with the Grade 1, really beginner, easy stuff to do. You know, they're very overpopulated routes um so you just don't get the kind of intimacy the peaks has got that because they're not chock a block with people all the time um so we were kind of forced in lockdown to do a lot of the peak district now i, I, I don't know if i've mentioned before so i'm i'm from i'm welsh so i'm mm -hmm. you know i love snowdonia always love snowdonia i've done quite a lot in the lakes as well um but yeah we were forced into the peaks just because of lockdown yeah so i ended up doing um there are there's guidebooks basically for scrambling, you know, varying degrees of how good they are. The Peaks one, there's only one real guidebook. It's not old, old, but it's it's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought I could do a better, uh, you know, a, an updated version of it. I wouldn't say better, an up, you know, an up, a, a yeah. up to date version of it. So I, over the course of lockdown, I did all forty of the greatest scrambles in the Peak District. Wow. Um, which is where this came from. So I've got a good friend on Instagram, Emily, um, her handles at Triggs and Teeth. She does a lot of um, trig bagging. Okay. Um, so she, did, you know, get into the top of trigs, uh, getting all the trigs ticked off in various areas in the country. Um, and we kind of came up with this challenge together. So we were discussing, she was like, I want to do a new challenge. And I said, well, well we put this forward. But it's a lot of work because it's not like just going with a trig. There's a top of a hill. You take it off your list, you know, these scrambles, they can be dangerous mm. in certain areas, depending on the grade, you know. It's not as easy with, you know, a mountain generally, you'll have a, a nice distinct path to the top. The scrambles, you know, you can quite easily go on the wrong line. So you go into a rock wall, it could be small in front of you. You could be going up the wrong line, potentially go on to like a grade two or a grade three route, yeah. and then, you know, you're in trouble. So there was a lot more to do with it. So that's what I've been doing over the past few months is rewriting or you know, writing a new guidebook for the Peak District just for scram just for scrambling. Um and that's it. So hashtag scramble the peaks, that's how that's kinda of come about. Yeah, and the work you're putting in on the site, I mean I've, as I'm reading through it and looking at it and obviously having listened to you on, on the other podcast, knowing, you know, I think you're doing putting the your book together, aren't you? As well. Yeah, so this will come out this will come out in paperback format when it's yeah. when it's finished. That's lot, some work. It's it's an effort, mate. Yeah. It's an effort <laughs> to just, you know, obviously I've been through and just just those guides, you know, I, yeah. I've been, you know, how you get there. And then each step along the way, which is what's been lacking really, particularly in this part of the country, is it's nice if you've got a guidebook in front of you, um, you know, whether you take a photo before you go out or whatever, is to, you know, look at it logically. So you're going through a section or up a hill, you know, through a scramble and go, right, I've done number one. Now I should be seeing this and then I should see this and I'm on to number two, then mm. number three, number four, and working out logically. That's where people start getting a bit flustered when they first go out doing this kind of thing. Of course, yeah. So you you did 40 of these? Yes, yeah, the there's, there's 40 graded, what were, there were graded scrambles. Right. So I've been, I've been through... Yeah, I've been through all 40. You've had some fun then in, in lockdown. Yeah, I, well, that's it, mate. Yeah, I mean, we've had, you know, if, if you just go out on a day and make a, you know, um, make a day of it and go, right, we're going to try and box off X amount in a day. Yeah. You know, some of them, um, Dovestone Reservoir, that's a, you know, that's a real, really popular walking route for people. There's kind of six scrambles. So, yeah, there's a Channel Clough on there. So that's right next to those Wilderness Gullies and, and Dovestone Reservoir. There's kind of like six, seven, eight scrambles right, right next to each other there. Okay. So you could go there and just do a lovely walk around Dovestone and a little scramble, or you could just go there for the day and just blitz the lot together. Mm. Mm. It's um, it's really interesting. And, and, and knowing, you know, how much... I mean, they're meticulous, aren't they? They're meticulous. You really 
heartfelt effort going into this as well and bringing it to people. Have you noticed then an uptick in people actually doing this during this time? Actually getting out there, you know, new newbies, if you like, like yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, especially the main the main walking routes. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a lot of people, and I, you know, I've heard comments like that. You know, some snippy comments from some people who have been doing it quite a while. Like, oh, it's the COVID, it's the COVID climbers, and it the COVID right. walkers, right? right? But you know, for me, that's mega that more people yeah. are like doing this kind of thing. You know, mm. and it's but then on my part, it's giving people the right information to be able to. You know, you can get it. You can get it if you know if you look for it on the internet. But then you've got to purposely go and find this information. You know, and mm. most people won't purposely go and look. Right, I need to know what I need to be safe with when I'm kind of going into these environments. Mm. This is why I've tried to package this up into one thing to go look. This is and sorry, sorry, the safety you touched on there. That that's something that I I know from when I'm just going out in wild camps and we might be going to a certain place and I look at it and I think what you're saying there, like <clears throat> trying to collate together all the details and all of the necessaries for where I'm going to go and will I get it right and if I if I go on my own when I'm wild camping if you know what if I end up in the wrong place, what's the safety element like for you guys and you know insurances and all of that side of things? Yeah, I mean, my advice to anybody going out, even if you're just hill walking, is. Um, the British Mountaineering Council, they do insurance. So if you're a member, um, you can get insured. Now, no, nothing to do with our activities, but just anyone who goes out, you know, take a look at that. Um, I'm not affiliated with them at all. <laughs> but, you know, their insurance policy of being a member is mega, you know. So if yeah. you do have an accident, you know, we've all got jobs and stuff. Yeah. You know, if you if you have an accident, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there for cover for you and things like that. Mm. Um, and also it's a mega web resource for, you know, telling you about safety and that kind of thing as well. Mm. From a safety point of view, um, yeah, that one of the biggest things people underestimate going up into the hill is uh, into the hills and mountains, and it's going to get worse in the next few months. Is once it starts to brighten up a touch, um, people assume I can rock up there in flip flops and shorts, uh. which is fine as long as you don't then have an accident. Because you know, if you're going up above 500 meters, you know, the weather can turn like that on you. Mm. Then factor in you've got mountain rescue. By the time you get them to you, it could be three, four, five hours. You know, you just got to think. If I do have an incident here today, um, you know, it doesn't have to be deep. You know, just a little sense check before you're going out. If I do have an incident, um, am I happy what I'm wearing and potentially where I'm going to be stood or sat or lying? I'm going to be there three, four, five hours. You know, yeah. is what I'm wearing sufficient for that? Yeah. That's the dead simple check you can do before going out, basically. Got you. Have you ever had a situation then, Alex, when you've been out personally climbing or any in, out in the wilderness and been caught short, had a difficult time? I mean, not not that's necessitated phoning Mountain Rescue. Mm. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, I suddenly, I suddenly have a podcast I've done. Um, you know, we, there's a group, you know, there's a group of us, good friends and stuff, you know, and fa family, my partner's brother, you know, he's an experienced kind of mountaineer. We're all within a couple of hours of each other. We would probably phone one another if someone yeah. get on a sticky situation, unless it, unless it was light threatening, you know, I'd probably make a phone call to someone and go, I'm stuck here, mate, I need some help. Mm. And then they'd probably bail from wherever they are and come and help us out because they know that's, you know, they know we'd do it in, yeah, of course. You know, in, in that situation, but... Um, uh, I've heard you say as well, which I thought was wonderful, which is, you know, sometimes the most heroic thing to do if you do get caught short is to say, I'm, 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 that's beyond me or I'm, that's too much or not be a hero, basically. Yeah. So that, that, that turn back, it, the ego, and especially if you're going out there with friends and, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to get this done today. Fit, you know, it runs away from people sometimes and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to have a go at that or, you know, I've seen this on Instagram or I've seen this on YouTube, it looks easy, I'm going to nail this. And then, you know, if there's any kind of inclement weather or, you know, conditions at sight worsen, the, the best thing you can do is just turn around and go home. That's mm. it. There's no, you know, you're potentially putting your life at risk, Mountain Rescue's life at risk, you know, anyone, you know, partners who are with you. Imagine if you have a fall and then one of your friends tries to help you and they also get in, in trouble, you know, that's the thing. So it's taking a um, a pers your personal responsibility for your own safety and then, you know, thinking about the other people around you, making sure their safety is okay as well. Mm. Cause, and that's it, it's having trust, which is inherently what you have to do. If you're going out with people and doing stuff like this in the outdoors, 
you've got to trust the people you're with because my god yeah yeah that's which, it which is why what you're doing is fantastic have have you found then in turning this into a kind of a business format a, a, a way of life is has there been difficult things to overcome to to think about things that you now have to consider that you didn't before i guess if you're responsible for people on days out and stuff like that yeah so i mean when i first you know because i i've got public liability insurance but when i first had to get that so background not going too much i'm an engineer so i I deal a lot with kind of risk and stuff like that inherently in my day job um but yeah doing a risk assessment for an outdoor activity you know i thought i knew everything i needed to know about that you know bog standard stuff when i'm going out somewhere what's my escape plan going to be what you know all, mm-hmm. all, all the stuff you would just do as going out but then when you look at a kind of a full risk assessment um yeah it's weird stuff like it takes into account what if someone's acting like a bit of a tit on the day and <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and random stuff like, that. Yeah, like yeah. you've got rowdy guests yeah. or one of them unsettling drunk. the yeah the, the the group and that's stuff like it that. yeah. yeah so you know or you know people uh, when people are in like heightened fear or something or you know it's the fight or flight thing and people can get quite aggressive and stuff like that so yeah. it's like taking into account all these really weird stuff yeah. that i've never done so i ended up with like a 28 page risk assessment document oh. just to you know yeah. to you know to satisfy the insurance company of course, of but course. it's good because some bits I've incorporated into my own kind of, you know, yeah. my daily the safety plan before you go to mm. site, mm. which, you know, people go, it's boring. Like, yeah, well, but. it is, <laughs> but I mean, as I've learned this year, you know, just being out, I, I think I had a moment, actually, it was, it was in, it was when we were in the peaks at that, at that particular clough there in Wild Boar Clough. My friend who took me out, he's 15 years, you know, He's not a scrambler, climber, hiker, but he's an outdoor guy. You know, he might disappear in the lakes for four days at a time, stuff like that. He'd forgotten his sunglasses when he was filling up his water at like the last bit of water on the way up there. And he okay. sort of left me. He says, right, I'll go and get my sunglasses. You wait here. And I was sat up there and I thought, God. And I, this was my, I, I only had a pair of trainers on. I had a pair of like Nike Air Max trainers on. Because um, I, again, it was my first time, didn't really know what I was doing. And I remember thinking, God, these are a bit rickety up here you know they're like there's an air bubble in the back that's just really weak <laughs> and like my ankle and I, I was thinking god if, if i did turn my ankle off if something happened up here you know i'm quite a way out i think yeah that boring thing that you mentioned you, there's a lot to learn when you're out there like this the expanse of being out there and some of your pictures and instagram and the places you're going you recently been back in wales i think yeah this yeah yeah for just like friday phenomenal yeah. amazing but that reality i guess in a picture it doesn't hit you until you're really there. The beauty and also the, the possibility that you, you could be, you know, on your own in a si- sticky situation. That, that that's yeah. enormous. Yeah, I mean, just those environments—they're they're awe-inspiring, aren't they? Yeah. Um, a, a, a good example I've given a few times is we were, um, we're, we're when we were doing these guides, we'd done so in the peak just it was only there's only really two places that are kind of grade two plus level so you'd say i would say i wouldn't touch them without ropes really um which is a lot of people have been there kinder downfall I so you wouldn't have been far from it by wild boar clough but basically it's one of the only i think it's one of the only um waterfalls that blows back on itself right so it looks like it's a plume of um smoke basically coming from the waterfall it's amazing if you stood at, if you're stood at the edge so it's near kinder scout which was the highest yeah. peak in the yeah. peaks um you're stood by the downfall and it's amazing because it's just a massive like kind of ravine theater and it's stunning but when you're at the bottom it looks even more amazing it's absolute but you feel so small in that environment Mm. because not a lot of people actually venture into the bottom of the thing everyone walks on the top they do the walk to kinder scout they get you know they get a photo by the trigger and that's it when you're in the bottom um and there was some chapper and he was he was wearing a pair of like just pair of trainers tracky bottoms um we were fully geared up like i mean i wouldn't have been going over all my gear and he was about to do the downfall um which is the main kind of scramble up the middle strip the waterfalls so there's a little cave under it and then you kind of go up and then over the top of the waterfall now we'd plan to do all three there's three scrambles there one on either side of the actual um ravine and then one bang in the middle of the downfall and we sacked it off and we had gear uh, yeah i think we had enough gear with us we, we probably could, may have done it safely but it was, we may have been able to, not okay. 100%. Um, we had a rope with some of the bits and pieces, but I looked at it and I was like, the water flow over that, you know, for us today. So we had a conversation between ourselves and it was, <coughs> no, we're not going to do it today. 
which is annoying because it's a massive hike to get back into that ravine. That's so, interesting, though, that you're disciplined enough, you know, and sensible and obviously, you know, well considered to say, you know, it's not the day. Did the other guy go for it? Yeah, there was two. I think there was two of us out on that day. Um, and the rule between us is if one person says it's too sketchy, it doesn't happen. Right. And that's it. You, and no one's going to get ripped for it after. No one's yeah. going to go, yeah, we could have done that maybe. You know, that's it. That The decision's done and then mm. it's kind of boxed off. Mm. But that's the thing coming back to trust again with, you know, your partners, or your climbing partner, all the people you're out scrambling with is that, you know, you should never push someone to the point where, because mm. that's when you can start losing trust with people. And, you know, if someone says <laughs> in climbing, it's a, it's a term used quite a lot. It's called sketching out. So if you're like, no, I don't like it. If someone's sketched out on it, you don't go any further. That's, That's it. cool. You're That's done. Cool. Um, and if someone pushes you to go further, probably not the person you should be climbing with. Right, that's but you interesting. But you may want to get back and then reassess how much you're going to go climb with them again. We could do with some of that mentality in like the everyday world, couldn't I know, we? Yeah. <laughs> Treat each other with a bit more <laughs> fair respect. That's it. I mean, you know, if, if you're being put in a kind of high pressure, some of these... Um, some of these situations, you know, they can be quite scary. Mm. Randomly, I'm not a massive fan of heights. That is random. Yeah. Because I've seen pictures of you in some insane places. <laughs> insane places. I don't, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of heights, to be honest. I'm not, like, it's, petrified of it, but... What is it, then? I mean, we'll get to the grading in a moment and sort of give give people a bit of a, you know, a uh, quick breeze through what, what we're saying scrambling is, but what is it for you, then, other than being outside and all that, you know, in the moment of doing scrambling what is it that, that exhilarates you i i think it's yeah i mean just being out in nature also the thing with the scrambles you don't tend to get as many people there so like i said you know hell valley and crib gork you know it's, it's always rammed uh, yeah. you know snow down in the lakes the really you know the favorite spots and don't knock anyone for doing those the mega they are amazing when you're on top of that on those ridge lines they're stunning um and i completely see why everyone does those but then these other places, you know, you're far less likely to come into contact with people as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, you do feel it's like a beautiful kind of isolation in that respect. And when you're climbing or scrambling or, you know, even walking in those areas, you know, you do feel you, your mind's off everything else. Yeah, That's it. Because, you know, even with scrambling, even at the lower grades, you know, you're still working out where I'm going to put my hands, where I'm going to put my feet. You can have 100% in the activity. And if you're not, that's when things can get yeah. a bit sketchy. But so generally you will be concentrating on what you're doing and your just mind just turns off to all the kind of daily stuff that's always mm. going on, you know, and mm. so that, that's... that's it's a, a meditation attraction. almost, isn't it, really? It is, it is you yeah. You know, concentrated meditation, like you say, you're in the moment. I've, I found that myself, even just with walking. But again, I keep coming back to my wild boar, but it's, I guess it's my only real experience. But I remember following David up there and following his feet and and really thinking, God, you know, I was in a zone. I was in a real kind of like, I was there, you know, like, well, a bag on my back, kind of, it was a new terrain for me anyway, just being out, having a bag on, you know, just the whole idea. I think I've heard you say yourself, you weren't really into hiking, you know, like yeah, the no. idea of you going, I'm going to the shop. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, and then you're out hiking. I, f I really felt, yeah, in the, in the moment. So for people listening and watching at home, so scrambling in grades, as I understand it, sort of one, two, three, and three plus. Yep. And yeah, give us, give us a bit of a, a rundown on, on how that works. So basically, um, you know, you've got you've got walking, you've got hill walking, and the various kind of apps you've got, all trails and, you know, all the other stuff, they'll kind of give you a difficulty, won't they? So you've got, like, easy, moderate, hard, you know. Yeah. You know, if you're talking, like, a, a walk around the country park, it's going to be a nice, easy walk. If you're going up to Snowdon, it's going to be a hard walk. Climbing, on the other end of the spectrum, very defined with the grading system um you know it's internationally recognized all countries have the kind of different you know but they all kind of tally into one system scrambling is a bit of an ad hoc affair um and also it's you know climbing once something submitted as a climbing route it'll be submitted by somebody whoever's opened the route generally so the first person to do it will probably submit it and mm. then um it'll be given its grading and then it's the grading's checked and after a certain period of time it's verified that's its grade scrambling is completely um you know ad hoc someone's 
attributed these raids, these scrambles over a period of time, but they're not kind of they're not registered. Yeah, um, or regulated. That's it in the same in the same sense that climbing is. So it's very op- very much open to kind of um, you know personal opinion on it. So with the Peak District one, well, just going back to that before I go through the grades, I've regraded the Peak District based on my knowledge of kind of you know the lakes and Snowdonia. I haven't really done much scrambling in Scotland to be perfectly honest, but from you know. My, my expertise, I've regraded the peaks um, for the hashtag Scramble the Peaks Challenge. And I've been very clear in there, you know, which ones you shouldn't be touching without a rope. Um, yeah, and what level of ability you probably need before you can do the certain scrambles. So I try to make it as accessible to everyone, really, just, you know, giving really basic language of if you're, you know, if you complete hill walks on a regular basis, then you're okay to do this pretty much yeah um so going back so it's a grade one bog standard um but then there's a massive variety in grade one so crib gorch in snowdonia is a grade one striding edge helvellyn is a grade one um compared to some of the grade ones in the peak district they feel far more sketchy than some of the peak district ones right, okay so the point with that is helvellyn um striding edge and crib gorch they're not from a technical point of view, they're not very hard to do. Um, it's quite wide. There's not a lot of climbing to be done there. They're very well-defined routes. They've got really easy handholds and footholds. So it's within most people's gift to do those. It's quite simple. The The thing with that is people think they're worse because, you know, you've got a massive drop either side. That's, and that's why they, yeah. they feel so yeah. much, you know, they feel much more than a grade one. But technically, they're not. You know, you you know, you can. You've got quite a bit of play there, where you're not going to fall off and die. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. But going back to that, so the, you know, there's a big kind of there's a big sphere within grade one of what you would say, and then you get on to kind of so grade ones. If you can manage a good hill walk, say eight to ten k, few hundred meter climbing, you're more. You know, you can easily do a grade one scramble. Yeah, that's my. Um, that's my view on it, and I would say the majority of people who do scramble would say that. So, what um, what would wild boar clough come falling? So that is, it's a grade two slash three by the old guidebook. Right. Um, it's absolutely not a two slash three. Um, right. You know, I was on milestone buttress on Truvan last Friday. Um, that's a grade three. That's a grade three. Yeah, you're hanging off. Yeah, there's areas there where you got to climb around the nose. Um, in essence, you there's no footholds, and you're literally you've got handholds to get you round it, wow. and then pull yourself up. So mm-hmm. yeah, I was rope, you know, obviously I was roped up for that. But that's a grade three, that, and that's why I've regraded this stuff in the peaks because yeah. it's not a true reflection. You know, you can look at that and go grade three wild boar cliff. You don't need ropes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you just need to be. There, there's nothing particularly hard either. There's good handholds, there's good footholds, but I think I've reclassified that as a grade two. Um, right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, if someone hasn't done any scrambling before, or I mean, you went with a friend, if you, you know, if you were just going out there, a couple of mates, or you know, family, you got friends, jumping straight on that's probably a bit much. Was well, definitely a bit much, actually. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's why I've done it in kind of color coded grade order for hashtag scramble the peaks, so then people can just go through, get a load of the ones under the belt, yeah. Then start looking at the twos, and then progressing from there, basically. Mm. And when you're getting into so ropes are getting involved. <laughs> What, in, in sort of the thick end of the twos? No, yeah, so not in the peaks. Um, <clears throat> but certainly, yeah, Lake District, um, Snowdonia, you know, when you're looking at kind of, you know, and some guidebooks break them down into plus or minus as well. Right. So, you know, each guidebook will say as well, they may say in the write-up, you may need a rope for this particular portion of the scramble. Um, I mean, we did the East Ridge of a garn in the Ogwin Valley a few weeks ago, Um yeah, and even for us, so we didn't use any protection, no ropes. It's a grade two, um, but that's bang on the limit for what we would do without rope protection. Um, but the peaks, yeah, there's quite a few twos there. I wouldn't You don't need ropes. I wouldn't say you need them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've regraded everything in this guide with two plus. So if it's a two plus, it needs ropes, basically. Okay. Um, and I think there's only five in the whole peak district that... I would say necessitate that kind of level of protection. Okay. So, okay. But I've, you've you've talked really highly about the Peak District when I've heard mm. you talking. You're not really, you know, because I think we all, like you say, we all think Lake District, Snowdonia, Wales, Scotland, even. 
yeah, it, we're only an hour from the peaks, and it's it's really really nice. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's a really central location for yeah. Mm, you know, if you're going to Derby side or Nottingham, and then <clears throat> for us in Cheshire, and you've got the whole of Manchester. You know, it's it, yeah. it's really close for that. So just because they don't look deftifying doesn't mean they're not worthwhile to kind of go and do. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you can see that. Look how many. How many scrambles there? We've got grade one. You know, there's so much. And mm-hmm. I know, because obviously I've been through all of them, they're absolutely stunning. So most of the photos I take, you know, if I put them on Instagram, the main photo I'll take is from the top of the scramble generally, right. yep. with a photo looking back where I've come from. Um, and you'll be lucky in some of them to see a person all day. And, yeah. you know, just that feeling of once you've got to the top, um, looking back out on where you've come from, it's an absolutely amazing feeling. Isn't it a strange thing, though, Alex, when... You know, because scrambling to me kind of feels like, is is there a central body? Is there any kind of regulating body like there would be for climbing or anything like that? No, so, no, that's... It's like, it kind of feels like a, like a new phenomenon to me, but then I'm... It's it random, it's very old, right? So, um, yeah, some of the, I mean, I, I'm a bit of a geek with this stuff, so I've got some, like, proper old scrambling guidebooks. And the level of detail in them is amazing, because they're all hand-drawn, kind of, mm. you know, now it'll be a photo with... You know, uh, GPS and stuff like su- that. Superimposed line over the top showing what line you're supposed to take at sight. The old ones are, um, you know, and this is stuff from like the 70s and that. They're, they're hand drawn pictures of the crag or the mountain or the route, and then, you know, little lines going up and they're absolutely amazing. So right. it's always it's always been there. It's just yeah, never, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's never been massively adopted, I suppose, in yeah. that respect. That you'd be surprised there are more people there are more people than you'd think out there doing scrambling. It's amazing because like what humans do, it's we we kind of you've said it yourself, you know, the COVID walkers or whatever, you know. We kind of want the magic for ourselves often, but then we want to share it. But then it gets shared to the point where we're like, <laughs> fucking hell, there's loads of people here cracking me up. Where can we go that's quiet? It's that weird popularizing something for the, all the right intentions and for good reason and then sometimes it can be diluted i don't think that's necessarily going to happen i know there's been a lot of talk with wild camping lately where i think lots of campers who aren't necessarily well versed in leave no trace and yeah. stuff like that there's been wildfires and lots of rubbish and landowners sort of crunching down on it a bit which of course, yeah I think it's just a lack of education it's not really people are bad they just don't really understand you know the simple the simple nature of looking after nature yeah so have you gotten to take people out yet then we've obviously all the lockdown and everything and you guys have, how long has it been since you've actually put this together and sort of put yourself in position to be able to take people out on these these scrambles well this so hashtag scramble the peaks launched um two weeks ago now um, so is it all? yeah two weeks two weeks ago right. this launch so i'm the i didn't want to wait for the paperback because it's starting to get good weather now so um there's i think there's 17 guides out of the 40 and they're on they're available on the website and there's there's enough in grade one two and two plus for people to get out and have a good run mm. of this stuff you know and people are you know i've had quite a lot of stuff on instagram come through so they've been tagging mm. using the uh, hashtag scramble the peaks hashtag to post stuff and you know people have been getting out there but they're you know the past few weeks have been quite poor weather um, mm. And a bit, you know, I'm very conscious to tell people, especially the peaks, because um, the majority of the scrambles are in cloughs, the bodies of water. Yeah. Um, so that's another fast, major yeah. factor. To, you know, and going back to the grades, that's that's one of the biggest things really in the grading system is, on paper, it may say it's a grade one, but if you get there and there's a lot of water there, potentially it's moved itself into a grade two. So it's completely weather dependent as well. Got you. And you'll have grade twos, which you'll think absolutely fine. Um, You know, it may not be a body of water. It may just be that the rock's slippy. That may then necessitate you needing ropes because the potential, you know, you've got risk, you know, the the inherent risk and the probability of something happening. um, You know, it goes up exponentially as soon as it gets wet Mm. and completely depends on the type of rock you're on as well. The peaks isn't too bad. It's grit stone. It's really, um, it's really grippy. It's you know, it's good rock. Um, so that it, you're kind of fine in the peaks for for rock, getting your hands on it and stuff. Um, but yeah, that that can knock some grade twos into a grade three, for example. You know, and you may need ropes and stuff then. So mm. that comes with experience. You can't really teach a lot of that. You know, people have to get out, do the grade ones, and maybe get to a bit and go. Feels a bit sketchy. This. Yeah. Don't know about this. Yeah. And then you know. 
they've made the mental note then of, I went there then, there was this much water, I didn't like it. So the next time you'll remember to do that on the, you know, when you go back out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating. I so want to we, we, get out on one. We, we took, um, so one of my, yeah, my friend off Instagram, Triggs and Teeth, um, me and Emily went out with a couple of other people to do the Wild Boar Clough. So that's, um, that's one of our uh, courses, basically. So it's, so it's a day course, going at Wild Boar Clough, which is like grade two, um, you know, teaching everybody the basics of scrambling pretty much. And then um, coming back down uh, another clough with an optional little grade two tagged on the end, so tall side oh, gully. Cool. Um, so yeah, we went out. It was the worst I've ever seen that that scramble, worst condition I've ever seen it in. Typically, um, yeah. <laughs> absolutely shocking. So <laughs> we got to the base of the scramble. There's four big obstacles on Wellbore Clough. Um, and one of the obstacles, I've never seen this, uh, it's a big kind of stone. It's a slab. You've got to kind of just like throw yourself over or mm-hmm. slip up, basically. Um, that was completely covered in water. It was like a second gully. I've never seen that before either. Really? So I've, you know, going into very geek mode of scrambling. Like, I mean, you know, I've made notes of, you know, the importance of weather. Um, you know, what conditions have been like. Every time I've been out to stuff like this, I'll make a note of what the weather's been like the preceding few days, yeah. what it was like on the day. So then I've got, you know, if I need to go look, predict what the weather's going to be like in the future, I know, well, it rained on day one, there was yeah. nothing on day two, I got there day three, it made a light rain in the morning, this is what the weather conditions are like. Um, so it had two previous dry days on there before we went out, and we got there, and it had been, it had been torrential since the morning, but me knowing the area, I thought, it's fine, because I know that body water can take X amount of water, it hasn't been raining for the few days before, even though it's going to be, it's going to be raining when we're going up. But that can be good. Maybe, you know, ideally you want to do it in nice sunshine and it's like, oh, lovely. Everything's perfect, but if, yeah. But if you learn this stuff in, like, adverse weather conditions, um, you know, you're bulletproof with that. If you've yeah. been out in the most horrendous rain and the wind's coming at you sideways, especially in a clough, um, mm. you know, it, it, you learn. You know, I, I, mm. I think it's far better. It's like trial by fire, really. Mm. But, yes, yeah, so we were out um, and we got to the bottom of the scramble and I had to call it straight away because I was like, we can't go up there today, I'm afraid to, you know, it's not safe. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, uh, we've had to reschedule for the next couple of weeks for that one. But. So, so how often are you guys going to be going out then? Is this going to be like every week? I know you mentioned, you know, there's a few of you involved. Is You've got day jobs and stuff like that. So this you're building this kind of from the grassroots up as well, aren't you? So. That's it, yeah. So we've got, we've got um, basic scrambling in the Peak District. So... That's like I say, covering the Wild Boar Clough route. Um, that's that's sold out. The next one, there's one I've put another date on there for that, um, and then Truvan, which I've classed as Scrambling Plus. So Truvan, um, it's my favourite mountain in, in Snowdonia. I mean, everyone loves going up Snowdon. Um, I'd much prefer to knock around the valley, around the Ogwen Valley, it's around there, mega scrambling paradise. Around it looks there. beautiful. I've seen some pictures recently. It, yeah. It's it's stunning, and there's enough variety there where you can kind of cut your teeth. There's enough grade ones that it's okay. Um, the problem with Truvan is it's a grade one again, so same as you know Cribgore, Helvellyn. Um, it's really hard to navigate, and you know over the years there have been a lot of deaths on Truvan. Um, really yeah you know and it's mainly people taking a wrong turn so it's really hard to navigate and you know even i when i go up there i have to give it a really good look of where i'm going every single time even Um, even now all these years in and it just goes to show doesn't it so i was i I was there i was there on friday and we were just doing the milestone buttress which is just a big rock buttress just at the bottom of the north face um so we didn't go up on the North Ridge, but the, one of the chaps was there with, you know, he's been up there hundreds of times. And there's there's an iconic stone on it. I don't know if you've seen it called the Cannon Stone. I think I have, yeah. And everyone gets a nice little photo yeah. sitting on the end of it. Um, he's been up there hundreds of times. He regularly misses the stone. It's just, it's so odd to kind of mm. navigate because everything looks the same. It's really dodgy. So, mm. you know, going up there on your own, then again, I've seen lots of people who've gone up there on their own. They're fine, you know. It's mm. you know people don't die every week there. The point, but mm. you can quite easily go down a blind alley and end up on the east face or the west face, and you know you're talking sheer drops like hundreds of feet. So it's just being very mindful of your, mm. you know, even when you're there, just not rushing through what you're doing. Just you know, take it nice and slow. Um, pick mm. your line. Try and be aware of what's coming up next in front of you. Mm. But yeah, Trovan. 
is amazing. It's my it's my favourite mountain. I'm um, I'm coming to <coughs> Wales. I'm doing a one of these rat race things. Um, man versus mountain oh, in okay. September. Cool. Never done anything like this before. Wow. I just trained with some guys in the village who one of them said, oh, there's this thing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I put my name down and then he sent me a link <laughs> and it's like 22 miles, I think something like 5,000 feet or something. Wow. And I looked at it and I followed the video and I thought, right, okay, I turned 40 this year. Okay. So I thought, okay, that's something cool to aim at, you know, tick over with the training and the stuff. And then I've been watching more and more of these videos and thinking, God, what have I signed up for? But I've never been, I've never actually been to Wales in that capacity. Okay. I stayed down there for one Christmas um, in South Wales one time and just in a little uh, cabin, but I've never actually been out and about and, and um, discovered it and had an adventure. So I'll be doing that later this year. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the whole of Snowdonia is beautiful. All you know, all the places. We tend to stay that side of Snowdonia in the. the it's called the Ogwen Valley. So you've got kind of, you've got Trevan, um, the Carnevies, which are across the road um, from there. Agan, um, which is where we did the East Ridge Scramble the other day. Uh, Glidervach, Glidervaur, um, and then a few kind of ridges that take you up and down there. Mm. So you know. This is a grade one as well. So you've got Bristley Ridge. You can make a day of it. You go across Trovan and then up Bristley Ridge. And one of the lines up, it's called Sinister Gully. Oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I know it sounds so sketchy, doesn't it? But um, yeah. it's a grade one, yeah. But again, though, so like that, I wouldn't recommend someone to just go and do it. Right. Um, you know, that, mm. I would recommend you get. And that's why the peaks is ace, because you can just go out there. You're not going to run into many people. Go mm. cut your teeth on all the grade ones. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be far better prepared for this stuff in kind of the lakes or Snowdonia, you know. It's, you know, it's nothing to sniff at a grade one. You know, no, it's a cracking day out not. at the end of the day. Uh, well, and what kind of kit would you advise that someone takes with them? I know, you know, you've stated before, and I think on the website, you know, basically your basic hiking gear. Um, but is there any, any sort of tips and hints for bits of kit that you think are, you know, well worth investing in if you take a fancy to what you're doing? Um, I mean, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do scrambling a lot, um, yeah, a pair of approach shoes, um, and I say that because you can use them as hiking shoes as well. Yeah. They're really comfortable. I randomly, I've got a pair on. I just yeah. knock about in these now, to yeah. be honest. They're cool, aren't um, they? As well, they're, they're, yeah. they're comfortable. These are mega. So, like, instead of a pair of trainers, but yeah. yeah. So that basically, I mean, if I got stuck on a mountain in a, a pair of these. Um, I'd be happy. I'd be fine. With it. What Even is like what is it, what is the ergonomic then? What is what's happening with the design of a, an approach shoe? That it's, it's given you? Yeah. So you've got at the front there. You've got kind of the toe box, yeah. um, which is exactly the same as a climbing shoe, and then it's got a climbing zone underneath there, um, and then the sides. It's called the rand. So this you can edge on it, so you can stick to the rock. Ah. Um, so yeah, I mean there. I'd go up most, most grade for it. Well, I'd go up all grade trees and these, to be honest, if I had to. I wouldn't necessarily wear climbing shoes to isn't do. It, isn't it interesting how, you know, design of, of stuff like that is, can help the safety of what you're doing? Oh, it's insane. So, like, these, they've got, like, a Vibram. Um, I, I I mean, I, yeah, I've got no association with Last Sports either. Um, they've got a Vibram ultra sticky sole. So as soon as you're on that mm -hmm. rock, mm -hmm. it's mega sticky. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not... They're not necessary, you know. The, you know, they're like hundred pound these shoes. You don't mm -hmm. need to spend that much. You can get cheaper approach shoes as well. Mm -hmm. It's worth. It's certainly worth um, if you're going to buy a. You know, you're thinking of spending seventy quid on a pair of hiking shoes or something. Definitely have a look at a pair of approach shoes because mm -hmm. you know you can. I would happily wear these for like a fifteen k walk walk in the hills or whatever. Yeah. I just wear these all the time to be honest. Yeah. Um, then yeah, you you can combine them. You don't. You know, you can have one shoe that does things really well. I mean, I'll probably just wear these and then throw my climbing shoes in a bag, generally. Mm -hmm. um, more as a kind of get-out-of-jail-free card, to mm -hmm. be honest, which sounds ridiculous. But if I did get stuck on, say, a grade three or something, yeah. and I needed to, like, down-climb or do something, I've always got my climbing shoes in my bag, so it's like I can always just throw them on. And Makes yeah. sense. And I see on the website you, you did, I think, one of the recent blogs <coughs> was about shoes, which were the best approach shoes or, what you know, top ten shoes. Yeah. That was really interesting. That's why I started reading about it. I actually think... I think I might have, I bought some um, from Go Outdoors, like probably most first first time outdoor people, um, mam mammut, mammut things. They're like a hiking shoe. But as I was reading about the approach shoes, I thought, oh, these are like a little crossbreed I think I've got, you know, the sticky sole and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I love wearing them. I find myself wearing <laughs> them around at the weekends and stuff. 
You do, mate. I just, I, I just look like an outdoorsy person, like knocking around. And so has it always you know, been the case, Alex, for you in that way? Have you always been, you know? No, well, no, not, no, not really. I mean, like I say, I, I do, I do still, I train quite a lot. So, like for for sport, I mean, I do, I do still like to maintain, um, doing a bit of powerlifting and stuff in the gym. That was so what what took you into powerlifting then? Did you do any competition powerlifting or just literally just... A couple, yeah, a couple of amateur comps a, a few years ago, yeah. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I love deadlifting. That's that's my main thing. Okay. Um, but it's really interesting, this outdoor stuff, because I'm working on this little side project. I'm not kind of... It's not coming out yet, but um, kind of functional fitness. So okay. it's basically looking at... Functional fitness basically means... Putting something together so, you know, your training represents all the stuff you're doing. So for me, power, you know, I wouldn't, with doing the outdoor stuff now, there's no way I could do any powerlifting competitions or anything because you have to be 100% dedicated to doing those specific exercises, you know, when yeah. you're talking pyramids and you're looking at 12 weekly plans and all that mm. stuff. But I still want to be able to do a little bit of that, you know. Um, so it's pulling together a fitness program that allows you to do the, you know, get to the level you want in whatever discipline you're doing. So for me, it's like climbing. I do enjoy climbing, but then, you know, a lot of people get really obsessed with the numbers. They're like, I want to do this higher grade route. You know, right. you'll see, you'll, yeah. if you see it on Instagram, they'll be like, I want to send this route. Um, you know, people start getting really transfixed on, you know, I, I want to do, I want to do a 6B or I want to do a 7A. I've done that now. I've got to there. I'm not asked about that stuff, to be perfectly honest. You know, mm -hmm. I'm quite, I lo I'm quite happy scrambling. I love scrambling. I do like trad climbing. So basically, trad climbing, that's what you do on a on a, on a grade three scramble if you're putting protection out. Basically, the two of you at the bottom, um, and then one of you's putting protection in and climbing first. So you're leading the route. Okay. So then you'll get to the top, um, set up a belay. So basically, you're you're attaching rope to something safe at the top, and then the other person's coming up, and you're bringing them up from the top while they're coming up they're taking out the interim protection you've put so basically the leader is just putting little bits of interim protection in so if he or she does have a fall hopefully yeah. they're not going to go too far um, God, the trust thing that you talk of then is yeah there's experience and trust and commitment and yeah. it's all there isn't it you've, you've got you know you've got to have it, it's implicit the trust you have to have with the, mm. the person you're climbing with do you, you climb know? with your partner do you say your partner's part of this no, she didn't. No, no, not climbing. She no. scrambles though. She come. We, oh. we we do bits and pieces. Well, so. same thing, really. In yeah, the end, yeah, isn't it? You know, you you know, when you start talking about trust and sort of having that that um that energy and that relaxed kind of trust that's yeah. silent in the back. You know, <laughs> the one the one thing she says to me all the time because I'll go. You know, you mentioned it before. You said um about watching where you put your feet. Mm. So I'll regularly go just follow my feet, and she'll go. Your footsteps are twice as big as mine. I can't follow them, can I? So I'll just like hop across a little stream mm. and she'll be like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? And I'm like, just follow where I went. Believe, believe. <laughs> so with you being a bigger lad with the lifting and stuff, um, does that, have you found that helps, hinders you? So there's, I mean, like at the moment, I think I'm sat at like 100 key. Right. Um, you know, if I wanted to go back properly into the climbing and start like getting up the grades, um, you're at, you're looking at you doing like specific climbing, climbing training basically in the week. You know you'd have to massively amend the the basically the whole exercise program you do um, because mm. doing isolation movements for climbing is really bad. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you want to, you know, and without beating about the bush, if you want a certain physique or you want to look a certain way aesthetically, um, you know, and you want to get really good at climbing probably not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing you got, you know, you've got to weigh up what exactly you want from the whole of, you know, all of your activities and what's the most important thing to you and then go from there, really. That's what's interesting when you mention functional strength. Um, as I've gotten older and had children and a family and a business and all of the life stuff that happens while you're busy making other plans, I found trying to keep fitness moving and trying to be, um, you know, once upon a time dedicated to football or to boxing or to whatever it was to then sort of just, now nah, I just need to be healthy and stay in some kind of shape as I get older and maintain my longevity. Trying to apply things that, um, that are functional. I found, um, really interesting as, as, as I kind of refine it as I get older. So I've gone through all sorts like, um, CrossFit to, um, circuit stuff, um, 
obviously running cycling and I'm at a point now where I incorporate sort of a bit of everything calisthenic stuff um, running the cycling kettlebells just stuff I can do at home like in between you know not having to get off to a gym or be a certain place yeah when I actually first did a few quite sizable hikes you know um, we went up to Red Tarns um, Red Tarn up in I think it's on the kind of North Yorkshire Lake yeah. kind of border there about a four hour hike up about 800 meters um guys fucked and i really thought <laughs> when we were going up there i thought i'm running like a couple of times a week I'm, I'm training three or four times a week you know quite functional i'm on the move i build in the day i thought yeah I'm, i'll be all right with this there was times when i was following dave's feet and watching him and he's just going and going and going I said, jesus christ this i am feeling this this is a different kind of um work and fitness and what I felt also quite interesting about it was for all of our kit and our kettlebells and our bands and all of the stuff that we buy to, you know, beat the the clock or whatever, there's something about like treading your feet on the earth, isn't there? And sort of kind of being connected to the earth and all the things you mentioned earlier about being in nature and the vast expanse and the kind of the beauty and the, the, the potential terror. There's something about that kind of fitness, that kind of uh, work that's, I don't think you beat it. That's what it felt like to me. It's hard. This is the thing. It's hard to mimic in any activity you do, you know, outdoor activities or in, you know, in the gym or whatever. It's hard to mimic something with something else. So it's like you said, then you're going on a hike. And if you're doing, you know, a few hundred meters climbing in that hike, the only thing you're going to have that's remotely comparable to that in a gym is probably the stepper. Right. So, sorry, the, yeah. the, the stairmaster, yeah. yeah. Now think, a stairmaster, you're on that for 10 minutes, you're smoked. Mm. Those things are brutal. Mm. That's the only thing you've got that's remotely comparable to going mm. up on a hike, really. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's the same with, say, climbing. I mean, I incorporated quite a long time ago. Um, I, I knew if I was going to get more kind of functional fitness out of my regime... So it was going to make my outdoor activities easier. I'd have to start incorporating more body weight stuff in there. So it was like, well, I need to drop some weight to allow me to do the body weight stuff because I'm never going to be able to lift my own mass. What um, would you have been then at your heaviest? Probably about 105 key, right. probably. Um, so I've only dropped like... So you're not far off then, yeah. No, maybe you're 98. So I'm probably about, probably about 98 at the moment. Um, like, I know it would be significantly easier for me if I was at 90 key. Right. Um but I, I don't, you know, it's all, it's all what people feel comfortable with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're not struggling when you're out doing what you're doing, then it's working, isn't it? I mean, some bits, like Friday, the last time, you know, going over that milestone buttress bit, and it's in one of my latest videos, you can't really see it much, but basically you've got a kind of spiked rock like that, the rope's behind it, which is a bit of protection, and that's just a sheer face. So you haven't really got anywhere to put your feet on that side. You've just got to bang both your hands on here wow. and then kind of pull yourself up and then you're over it. Um, a lot of people will be proper sketched out on it. I'm fine with it because you know it's it's all right. Mm. But I felt it Friday because I was like, and I knew, and, and straight away as soon as I lifted it, I thought it's fine because I can get up. But I thought if I was a good five kilo lighter, that would have been a piece of piss. Right, um, got you. But that's what you know. That's the toss up. Like I say, with functional fitness, it's mm. like you know you want to do certain things in your life. Do I want to go do higher graded climbing? No, like I'm happy doing the scrambling, doing a little bit of trad climbing as well. Um, you know, because there's loads of amazing, not particularly hard trad climbing routes around that area in Snowdonia and Snowdonia as well. But it that it may be a natural progression. What I'm what I try to get across to people is scrambling isn't like a lower graded version of climbing. It's a completely different thing. Um, mm. It just so happens when you're scrambling, you may need to borrow some of the principles from climbing yeah. to get the scrambles done you yeah. know what i mean yeah so, of course yeah and it's the same you know with hill walking it's not hill walking it's you know you're using your feet but mm. you're using your feet and your hands to move over rough terrain that's mm. it yeah. um so yeah people some people like climbers look at it and go oh, scrambling mm. it's a bit of a low effort climbing it and it's like no it's a completely different skill set yeah this is what i'm starting to get my head around is you know and obviously i don't know a lot about any of this stuff i'm a year into it although i fall in love with being outside and exploring all of these different ideas scrambling just seems it seems uh, attainable but the more i'm learning it's like there's a hell of a lot of respect that's got to be shown and, and knowledge and i think this comes with this is what i notice you know when i do end up in the peaks or the lakes 
everybody I see, whether it's guys unloading boats to get out on the lakes or whether it's ramblers or cyclists or road cyclists or mountain bikers, there's a certain level of commitment that just seems to be in the air yeah. to whatever the task is that people are taking on. You know, even with the campers alone, leaving no trace and, and the whole deal. I, I really do like that about it. And with the scrambling, I'm, 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 um, I'm really interested. In fact, Dave, my friend who takes me out, he did say to me, he says, you know, if you fancy it, we could maybe incorporate a bit of a scramble. We go up to the lakes and I think you might be ready for it, you know. It's like, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be well up for it. And especially now... <laughs> Now I'm sort of learning more and more about it. But coming back to your sort of fitness regime, so what do you do now then in terms of your general fitness? How do you work it? What's involved in your fitness? Yeah, I mean, I used to do like a four, five-day split, basically, um, and incorporate some cardio into it. Um, I've kind of dipped that down to three, four days, probably three days, to be honest. Um, I don't know where you're finding any time, Alex. You're just doing the Yeah, same I mean, much. the thing is, if, if you do, I mean, a lot of people think, though, because a lot of people go to a gym and they'll spend, I mean, I, I've been training for years. Um, I, I don't I don't have a PT qualification. Um, but then, you know, I think I'm absolutely fine. On top of yeah. You know, yeah. no knock on PTs, like, but, yeah, um, yeah so m my splits, if I was doing a four or five day, I'm not in the gym for hours. I'm in there 45 minutes, bang, I've done what I need to do and I'm out. That's yes. it, I'm gone. Okay. Um, you know, so sometimes if you do do a two, three day split, you know, if you're in the gym any longer than an hour, you know, mm. probably been in there a bit long. Mm. Um, but yeah, splitting it over four days and do 45 minutes, whack, in, out, you know. Um, I've had to dip some of the isolation moves out of my training, certainly, um, right. you know. Arms, having larger arms is of no use to you in the outdoors. Right, interesting. Um, I've come to find far more now. Yeah. Um, even though we climbed years ago, but I was significantly younger then. Yeah, um, different, you know, yeah, you've got a whole different ergonomic in your that's body. That's it, mate. Yeah. So when you, get, when you get a bit older, so yeah, you, you know, it's like, well, I still want to maintain a certain look aesthetically, mm -hmm. but also I don't want it to be a massive ball ache when I'm trying to climb up something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyone, you know, I, I, my advice would be, if you want to kind of get outdoors fit, so you want to do, you know, you want to do, you know, if you want to start doing a gym routine, basically, yeah, if you're not doing a gym routine at the moment and you want to kind of, you want to do all your outdoor stuff, um, you know, and you want to feel good, yeah, definitely a two, three day split, um, which, is a, which is what I'm working on at the moment. Um, so what would you incorporate within one of them sessions then? Well, I would say, um, yeah, I mean, if you can stretch the three days a week, uh, push, pull, and legs. So mm -hmm. pushing movements one day, pulling movements another, and then legs. Um, or if you haven't, yeah, you'd have to incorporate the legs. Um, but again, you know, you you do the pulling motion with the legs with the pull session and the pushing with the with the pushing session. Right, but yeah. what I would say to anybody is, if you even if you do if you do those two days a week, um, and even if you don't, I'm I'm you know I'm not justifying people skipping gym time like you know that's naughty. <laughs> But even if you don't do it every week, yeah, because we've all got lives, you know, yeah, we yeah. have to live. Um, you will notice a massive difference strength-wise as soon as you start doing those basic things. And, I, you know, at, for, for now, we're working on this as a side project, um, which I hope we come off in the future. But I would say if you just Google push-pull um, training, you know, you'll find plenty of resources out on Google for that. Okay. And it's going to be basic compound movements, you know, you're looking at the bog standard stuff. What you don't want to be doing is, you know, isolation movements. You're sitting there doing like little one arm curls and that. Yeah. No use to anyone. Yeah. You know, yeah. your well, arms you might look, look nice. a little bit yeah. better. Yeah, they yeah. might do. I don't know. It depends on how many one arm curls you do. <laughs> but, you know, squats, deadlifts, bench presses, yeah. back movement, pull ups. Yeah, pull ups. Body yeah. weight stuff. So burpees, um, you know, kettlebells, great example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly the pull ups, they're mega. Pull ups, um, yeah, savage, yeah. yeah. Really so, good workout. I mean, I normally with uh, on my back day, I'll do assist assisted, but I'll try and do like a hundred assisted pull ups wow. for like back day, which sounds mental, doesn't it? But what would you break them into? Are they going up in sets of what? So I do, yeah, I do ten, um, and this is the other thing to alter the grip because obviously that it's one of the most uh, I I didn't really pay much heed for years to be honest. Um, it's one of the most versatile exercises because, mm -hmm. you know, you tweak your hands. So there you're doing your lats. Yep. Um, and then you flip your hands around. Now you're doing your biceps. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Close, here, yeah. here as well. And an, another good tip. I'm going on to fitness now. Which that's that's great. We're, like I say, we're a, we're a multifarious <laughs> conversation. If you, um, 
if if you're doing a pull up, yeah, and you take your fingers off here at the top, so it looks like a trigger finger, yeah, you take them off. Um, it takes your forearms out of it, wow. so it completely works your back. That's interesting. So you, when you think you might be smoked, if you've got your hands like that, take your figure, fingers off, and uh, it takes your forearms completely out. Your forearms can't engage. That's mad. Your fingers on there, yeah. Isn't it? So you keep going. So that I'll try and do, um, and I'll throw like twenty five kit. I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm not interested. People get so hung up on numbers in the gym. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the numbers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Lift what you can, lift it comfortably yeah. and push yourself. That's push yourself, you know, Who yeah. gives a shit what numbers The numbers don't matter. If you're dumbbell. working, you're working. That's you? it, mate. If you've got a sweater, you should be sweating. You should, yeah. have, you should be getting hot. If you can talk, mm -hmm. you know, you should be able to hold a conversation but not be rabbiting on for ages. Yeah. Um, that's the most important thing in the gym. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'd just change all the grips around. Um, you know, I'd have like 25 key on the uh, assisted thing mm -hmm. and just blast out 100 of those at the start. Mm -hmm. That That's been one of the most... in the you know the past 10 years one of the, the best go things i've done yeah. in, in my gym routine i did that in at the start it's amazing well one of the things i do on the bar which i've been doing for years now is just hanging as well just hanging on the bar for decompression just hanging for a couple of minutes trying to get a couple of minutes it's difficult that's but amazing it feels amazing when i've done it that's you know climbers um and I've never done a massive, even when we used to climb, I never did a massive amount of climber-specific training. A lot of people, though, in climbing, they'll get into, so fingerboards, or if, I don't know if you've mm. seen them in yeah. climbing, um, you know, that's to assist with your, ten, you know, with your tendons and stuff like that. But you shouldn't be doing any of that until you're kind of a couple of years into climbing. Mm -hmm. And when they say that, that's like going and doing climbing two or three times a week, you know, yeah. and doing some climbing-specific training. Mm. Um, you know, you shouldn't be touching a fingerboard for at least two years. Now, for me, that's a massive effort. I'm never going to get back to that because I enjoy doing the other stuff too much. Yeah. And, you know, it's in your, you know, people beat themselves up about this kind of stuff, don't they? Like, oh, well, I want to get to this certain level. Yes. I don't want to do this. And it's like, just look at what's important in your life. Mm. Um, you know, you want to maintain a certain level of fitness. You want to be able to do your outdoor stuff and not be blowing when you're going up the top of a mountain. Mm -hmm. you might want to do a bit of scrambling. You know, that, and that, that that's that's me, and I'm happy with that. That's, you know. Oh, absolutely. You don't, you don't have to. <clears throat> I've learned the lessons. You know, you don't have to be perfect. At, you know, like, so I want to do these four activities regularly. So it's not like I want to be a champion powerlifter. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to climb, like, seven Bs and, you know, ludicrous climbing routes where you can only get like a small finger in a crack you know yeah. that, that's you know yeah i'll have a happy spread of all of it across it and that's cool for me like, that's really great advice that's healthy advice and i think it all adds to that focus to what you're doing in the moment as well because when our intentions are set a bit more sort of humbly like that you know we're not necessarily i don't know like you say the numbers in the gym or whatever it is sort of seeking the thing from outside of ourselves as much it kind of takes away when you when you're in when you're doing it for you and you're being realistic about what you're doing, I think there's so much more reward there. There's, so, there's something more tangible and real in it. Yeah. I think that's that's really great advice. So 2021, as we are getting on for halfway through it now. Oh, insane. How insane is that? It is madness, <laughs> isn't it? It's mad. But you've been so busy with doing what you're doing in the time scale you've done it. I mean, as we mentioned, the website before looks amazing. All of the work you're putting in, rewriting these these um, grades and these climbs and scrambles, um, amazing. So as we move into the second part of the year and hopefully we you know resume life, as it were, what does the future look like for Scramble This UK? Is it going to be sort of just going at it, going at it, so the day job can sort of fade away is that the plan no yeah i mean that that'd be great wouldn't it um you can just be out scrambling and who, seeing smiling yeah. faces who, who knows i mean i ha, hashtag scramble the peaks it'd be great if it, so the main thing if anyone takes away from today is um that resource is there now it's free you know i've made it as accessible as possible for anybody who wants to go and have a blast at it um Get out and do a few, you know, and inco mm. or incorporate. There's so many. The, the 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 peaks again. This is why it's so good. You know, if you're going to Trovan, you're going to scramble. There's no way to get to the top of that mountain without scrambling. Yeah, you have to scramble there. These peaks ones, tag it onto a walk. You know, tag mm. a little one onto a walk and see if you fancy it. And if you don't, mm. sound you're done, aren't you? You haven't bought any gear. You've gone out. You know, you've gone out walking. You've had a nice day. And you go. Oh, I didn't like that. Fine, mm. done. Mm. Mm. 
but that's there so that'll be complete for the year i'd love to see as many people as possible getting on that so on instagram using the hashtag scramble the peaks tagging, link all this in, in cool. underneath the video yeah um tagging us into everything we love you know we love reposting stuff people put on as well it's mega i, I find it so rewarding when people um you know some accounts are really tetchy about like posting stuff apart mm. from their own content if someone like does the honor of tagging us in something, you know they've gone to the they've gone to the effort of thinking, oh, they might like this. Um, yeah, we repost stuff all the time. It's a seeing people out doing that. I get that from you, Alex. As as um, as I've listened to you on the summit to talk about podcast, as I've followed your page and jumped on, and I get that 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 genuine passion for what you're doing. I think you've you've kind of explained that across the board, whether we talked about fitness or what, whatever it may be. You know, like there's a genuine passion for what you're doing and, and, and wanting to share it and I think that comes through and seeing your page which is really cool you know you're doing good stuff with that page Instagram as I'm talking about here yeah. as well you know you, you, your ability have you got any background in in kind of graphic design or any kind of yeah. video making <laughs> I've done, yeah I've done a little bit yeah, yeah you yeah. can see that you know you can see that because everybody's obviously a graphic designer now because we've all got these apps and we're all doing this and that and the other but there's a certain way to do something very simple and make it accessible and, you know, that whatever that X factor is that, that gets you, and you're great with that, as well as not being snobby, which is a great combination because <laughs> you are engaging. You know, you've, I heard you say, you know, you're not a faceless page. You, you, you're sharing people's stuff. People are tagging you. It's a lovely thing. When we get messages, we'll get messages from this podcast. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. And it's, it's amazing yeah. because it's, a, I don't know, there's something authentic about it. You know, it's not just is the numbers I just hit in the gym, how strong am I or whatever. It's like we're we're out there putting, well, you are, are putting your time, like, and skin and bone into this, you know, and you can see it. And I think that's amazing. And I congratulate you on it. Cheers, mate. And that's I wanna, really I wanna, nice to I want to come and do one of these scramble days as well. Yeah, Sam, well, we've got... Um we got loads of dates, so yeah, you will. Uh, I'll hop on and I'll um, I'll, I'll find one. And we'll come along and do one. I'd love to do. Uh, yeah, you'll have to jump on one of the, yeah, uh, the Peak I, District ones. That'd I'd be interesting, though. It'd be good because uh, if you've been through that section, I think does. I have. I mean, after chat this, I might have been talking <laughs> absolute horse shit the whole podcast. But my second time I went out camping with Dave and went up a, the first time up a hill. I'm sure it was that. I'll have to. I'll check it and uh, I'll let you know. But I'm pretty sure it is pretty sure it is and i took my kids back there but we'll find out that'll be mega so you know you've you've done me the courtesy of having me in here with you today so now i'll certainly extend the same to you mate oh, it'd, be, and, uh, it'd be amazing it'd be, and so, so is it just you doing it scramble this or is there a couple of you how's it work yeah so the guy the guided stuff um you know the actual you know going out getting the footage doing all that stuff you know there's me, me and a few friends but the guided scramble days yeah it's only mm. yeah it's on it's only me taking people out on those fantastic um, but yeah, the course, you know, the course numbers, they're not massive. There's, you know, we don't have loads of people there. The Peaks is good because we picked that route purposely because you can get quite a few people in there. Yeah. Again, from a financial aspect, um, you know, if people go out doing scrambling, the, the, you know, especially in Snowdonia as well, you've got, you've got to keep the ratios quite low. So yeah. you're looking at one instructor to two people or potentially four people. And, you know, everyone's got to make a living. You know, what I'm not trying to do is steal work off people who are doing this, like, day yeah. in, day out, at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? So, but for the peaks, you can get away with having a higher course ratio just because it's not sketchy, you know, particularly the beginner's route we picked through there. And you've got loads of space before and after each obstacle. Um, so you can still put the amount of time you need to, you know, even though it's one day. So, you know, we've 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 made that as cheap as we possibly can mm. to get, you know, mm. because we've made the ratios higher. Yeah. Um, you know, and you so know, what is the ratio? Is it one one and eight, one and six? Yeah, one and six. Yeah, yeah one and six. it depends. Like you know, Trovan, it, it it completely depends on where where mm. you are. That's the thing, you know. And then I have to go through my full risk assessment process. And, and so, if you're planning the dates in, from your perspective, are you trying to think about whether in various parts of the country are likely to be sort of better place than others? Or is it just a case so, of... Yeah, I mean, alternatives. The, the the main issue with the peaks is, so even the other week, like I know some routes that may have been slightly less wet than that one when we got there. But yeah, I mean, going on to that one, I will throw this one in if we've got time. So yeah, basically, if you're going out to do a grade one scramble, um, I said weather's massively crucial on this. So if you can think you've got a ridge um, or you've got a clough, you know, th there's not a lot of in between, really. You're either on something that's open like this or something that's like that. Mm. So in one of those instances, 
for example, wind is going to be mass a massive issue. So, you know, Crossing. if you're going up on Bristley Ridge, uh, sorry, on uh, Helvellyn, on Stryden Edge, and there's 50 mile an hour winds, uh, yeah. yeah, sketch. Yeah. However, um, if you're going into one of the tarns or, you know, or, or, or one of the gills in the Lake District, um, and there hasn't been a significant amount of rainfall, the wind's probably not going to be a problem. Mm. Um, so it's been, you know, it's having that flexibility in your planning. So it's like, well, I know I'm going to go out. You have a plan A, and then you can have a plan B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, you know, yeah. go down the list. Yeah. And again, that'll come with experience, you know. Mm. A lot of the stuff in the peaks, if you're going to get a lot of rainfall, a lot of them in cloughs, so they're probably all going to be quite, you know, heavy. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to snow down the lakes, you know, if it's going to be, shocking wind but that's the main thing it's dead simple download the weather app met, yep. off, met office weather apps bang in for that yep. you've got um mountain weather as that's well right, google yeah. mountain weather that's yep. a class app especially for um snowden in the lake snowden in the lakes mm -hmm. um yeah and just be do a bit of pre-planning you know but if it's been you know if you know it's going to rain all day um but the wind's looking at 10 mile an hour you know there's nothing else picking up what's the worst weather for you is it wind is wind the is, is wind the boo-boo weather I mean, for the higher graded scrambling, rain is not great, mm. depending on where you are. Um, and again, it completely depends on the rock type. But, you know, it's, that's getting a bit geeky like. But, you know, this is stuff It's good if you get into it to pick it up. You know, mm. especially if, you, if you're climbing outdoors, you pick this stuff up because you know, um, you know, the different rock types. Like, grit stone's decent. It, you know, it's good. It's good grippy. Um, Rand Travan, the whole it's made out of rhyolite, um, okay. which is that it's it's a grippy rock type and it dries off really quickly. So that's why it's amazing. So Friday, for example, it was raining when we went up, um, and that root's really polished. So you you might not have seen this, but where you've got you look at the rock and go, it's really polished. It's because so many people. I was going to say, is yeah, that because of the traffic? That's it, literally the traffic. So a lot of places kind of dip out of popularity because they come polished. Oh. So loads of areas just get abandoned for quite a long period of time because it's like people who climb, they just go, oh. I go on that shit now because it's covered in polish. Because it's sketchy when it's wet, you know. Right. But with Trevan being rhyolite, um, you know, it can be wet and then bone dry in like 10 minutes. It's mental. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they're different. But, yeah, but just get used to looking at the weather apps. That's mm. From a safety point of view, that's one of the biggest ones for me people to pay mm. attention to and take appropriate clothing out with you yes hiking shoes um you know it may be cracking the flags at the bottom but you know yeah so just, the higher you go and, and the further you go you just don't know what you're going to expect do you that's it and uh, prepare for the worst mm. that, that's the thing you know it sounds morbid but you know expect i'm going to fall off that cliff there and have to wait for my mountain rescue four hours you know all you want is loads of people got them now you want like a down jacket in your bag you know yeah. so you can rock up there in your shorts and teach one of the most rewarding things that i've found and i've said this many times in this podcast is now i've and i'm talking kind of wild camping style here so a bit of hiking you know up somewhere up a town or something like that and then setting up and one of the most wonderful things that i find is like looking at my little bag you know i think i use like i've got a like a 60 liter so it's a reasonable size bag and i take too much food because i just love to have <laughs> nice food when we're there but i'm probably at 12 kilos or something like that but I love it. I've got I've got everything in that bag, and it's just that bag on my back. And I'm ready for cold weather. I'm ready for sleep. I've got shelter. I've got food. I've got some wine. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like looking at that bag and knowing. And now I've, I've got a little bit more experience about what to take, what not to take. I've got my first aid kit. I've got my knife. I've got you know everything is in this bag, and I could be okay for a couple of days. I could be anywhere. It's, I love that feeling. The more the more kind of experience I get, the kind of less stuff I take as well, which seems uh, kind of counterintuitive, but it seems to be the case. You know, I, I was piling loads of stuff in before, but I do. I love that feeling of having that stuff at my disposal and being prepared. Yeah, you know, being able to pull out of whatever it is. You know, I've got one of those. I can cover that. Yeah, there's a spare cagoule or whatever it may be. That's a nice feeling. Yeah, it's ace. You it know, is, it's it? It, it, well, you got a bit. I don't know it's weird. You get a bit of a sense of achievement, don't you? It's yeah. Like, well, I've just out what I need to go there and I know I'm going to be okay when I go there. And mm. I know I'm going to be okay if something bad happens. Yeah. You know, um, mm. I've heard loads of stories. I've seen loads of stuff, you know, as well. But the best bet. story I heard recently, um, I, I didn't see it. So <laughs> I know he said he was up, he was up Trevan and it was the middle of winter. So he was doing a, a winter mountain leader course with somebody. Um, so he had full winter mountaineering gear on, crampons, um, you know, 
So he had the he had the whack on. And if he had it on, yeah. it needed to have it on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all of a sudden this bloke just appears over like near the near the north over the north ridge going towards like the the, the, the summit. Um and he was just wearing like a Marks and Spencer's jacket, kind of you know, like like a summer autumn jacket, um, just an old pair of shoes, and he had two Sainsbury's bags, and he was like, "What? <laughs> Jesus God. Christ!" So yeah, he, but there's no bullshit because he, 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 you know, he, he wouldn't he wouldn't make himself up. He's so. even an exemplary climber, <laughs> or well, just a fucking this lunatic. Is the, this is the thing. So. I like I'm not the mountain police, yeah. That's not my job. Yep. So I mean, if I saw something blatantly unsafe when I was out there, I would probably say something to, to somebody mm. and risk looking like a dick in front of them who may have far more experience than me. Just but, to yeah, to, just to care. But just to, you know, that's yeah. the thing. It's about you know looking you okay? after each other, isn't, yeah. isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, like someone did it the other week. We were going up to do you know. Um, on the east face of Trevon randomly, there's like a grade one plus there. Now, we wouldn't probably go do that for enjoyment. We were filming it for Instagram. Um, but yeah, we were just rocking up and obviously didn't have ropes, or, you know, none of that stuff. Um, and uh, some bloke was like, we've got ropes, lads. And it's like, it's, I, I, I respected him asking us that because mm. we could have, I mean, I don't think I look like an amateur, I don't know. But mm. he was like, you know, he took the, you know, the thing to go, Basically, do you know what you're doing? And I was yeah. like, so I had a quick chat with him, and he was like, "All right, sounds." And then he went off and did his stuff. But cool. it's just you know, it's nice that people think of other people. But yeah, absolutely, you don't want to be the mountain police. But yeah, so we asked this dude, and he's like, um, "You're all right, mate. What you?" And he said, "Oh, just uh, just come up here for some lunch. Just uh, staying in the area." <laughs> and it was like a whiteout on the top. <laughs> it's two things these bags. Jesus Christ! But he'd got up there. Yeah. Like that's some going that in a, you know, just a pair of like M and like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just you know, like just city dad, street. dad shoes yeah. in it. Like yeah, yeah. he wears the office. It's like yeah. I have no idea how you get up that. Because it's like mad. they have full crampons. Yeah. Anyway, mental. But wow. that's the thing. People just because you see people doing stuff like that and knocking them out on flip flops, like mm. you know, don't imitate them. Well, right? I, knew, I knew when I was following David's feet up that thing, you know, and I and he'd you know, we'd I don't know, I, I'm very sensitive to this. So I come with him and I had my bag and I thought I knew what I was doing. I'd bought like a cheap bag, you know, like a 40 litre trespass bag. And I put my stuff in it. And then when we got out the back of his vehicle, when we parked at the at the bottom before we went up and made the hike, he sort of said, right, come on, let's have a look at your bag. And he started going through my bag. He's taking stuff. He said, right, we'll leave that. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that. Got my towel out. I had like a bathroom towel that must, must have weighed about four <laughs> kilos. He said, yeah, you don't need that. And he cut me a little bit of his microfiber towel off about this big and I was like Dave what am I going to do with that because we'd planned to go in the water he says you'll be alright with that don't worry about that anyway my bag became like you know a third of its contents and then I was walking up I was looking at him and his bag was just not moving you know everything was slick everything his shoe he changed his shoes he had different shoes on for climbing and my bag was like rattling around on the back of me and stuff and moving and, and I was puffing and huffing and he, he, he just came up to me and he sort of just changed these pulled that in done this thing Right, right now walk and I was like all of a sudden it's like oh yeah that's loads better just little details like that that were really kind of humbling and then I remember being so excited when I'd had that that night getting home the next day and I was straight looking for new gear like better gear because I knew that was it and I must have been out god this last year I bet I've been out 30 40 times loved it every chance I've got when the weather's been okay and learning about the weather which is what I was going to come to actually as you were talking about, you know, getting those co good couple of apps and paying attention to the weather, having respect for the weather. In the times that we live in, where these things are fucking amazing and lethal at the same time, especially for young people, mm. um, I found getting outside has been such a medicine. And I think, and I hope, that this conversation lends itself to to just you know, everybody, but younger people as well, that we might we might start to get outside a bit more. I think this time we've been through has definitely given us that, when we weren't able to go to the cinema or do the things that we usually do, and people were just going out for walks, camping, whatever it may be. I think it's important, and the work you're doing in bringing it to people is amazing, I think. And, um, yeah, we need more of it, and I hope that anybody listening to this thinks, you know what, I fancy a bit of that, gives it a go contact you guys we'll link everything at the bottom below this video website instagram all that other stuff is there anything else 
in there that you want to you want link sweet to? no that's it no no yeah that's it our, our, our main feed we're just going to concentrate on instagram to be honest and yeah you know it's, it's it's such an easy platform it's great for what you do as well because it's so beautiful the pictures and the, the way it communicates is fantastic it's mega and you know the engagement we get on instagram like i you know i've done quite a lot with social media over the years doing various stuff and the, you can connect with people on Instagram. Like it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not always evil social media, like mm. Instagram, especially if you're, you know, looking particularly outdoor stuff, everyone's cool. Like they're, yeah. they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm like dropping someone a message or something, you know, they're not like, that's how I message you. I mean, I'm the same. It's the one that we use other than uploading our podcast. This goes to YouTube. This, this podcast, we upload this to YouTube and it goes up on the audio to all the usual spots, iTunes and all that. Instagram is the only social media that we use because yeah. I find the culture in there is just, it does feel a bit more uh, healthy. Yes. <laughs> if, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, no, as, as far as social media is going to do that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I've made loads of connections with like really, really nice people. Mm. Um, you know, lovely people. Mm. I'm, I'm mega happy with it. And my previous experience with social media is like, yeah, it's quite vapid and, you know, throw away. And yeah. So yeah, it's been it's it's been good. So yeah, Instagram definitely. We'll send we'll send them there. So listen, thank you, Alex. I really appreciate your time. You've driven um, high high roads to get here. <laughs> I appreciate it. Take care of yourself. We'll send everybody over to scrambletheshuk.co.uk. Thank you, sir. Cheers, mate. Thank you. You take care. Cheers.